All right, this is Dr. Jeff, and I am here at Whiting Ranch. And it's another episode of mountain biking mindfulness. Planning on riding up dreaded, let's be honest, uh, walking up dreaded, mountain hiking, shall I say, and then um, riding down uh, cactus and all the great single track. Saw so a lot of great video uh, on the way down. So today's topic that I wanna discuss with you all is how to talk to somebody who's, I don't know, how should I say, uh, a little difficult to talk to, right? Or maybe somebody that you're frustrated at, somebody where, you know, maybe some mistakes have been made. First of all, I just wanna give a little disclaimer. I'm not thinking about anybody. I'm just sharing some advice that I heard from another colleague that I thought was so good, which is why I thought it was worth an, an opportunity to think about it on this mindfulness ride. So let's say you have to talk to somebody and you're feeling that irritation or frustration, right? For whatever reason. If you're feeling that, probably better to wait 24 hours. So step one, don't even talk to them in that moment if you don't have to. Sometimes you're wanting to get out of the way, but uh, trust me, it's, it's probably gonna wait 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, you'll feel so different about it. Even though the issue might still be there, maybe the issue won't seem as big. I'm, there's been times where, you know, I didn't have to follow up. So, but definitely after 24 hours, you'll have a cooler head and cooler heads regularly prevail. All right, but let's say you are needing to talk to that person. Then uh, what this colleague said that this person does when talking to like another adult, because this colleague also has a spouse that's a teacher. And this colleague said, you know what, I just try to imagine how would I want another person talking to my wife, right? Wow, you know, have you ever thought about that? That colleague that, you know, maybe a little difficult? Like somebody really loves that person, somebody cares about that person. Could be in a marriage, could be a mother, husband, father, whatever, right? And so, as you imagine someone that you care about, right? How would you want that person to be talked to? Even if it was something that needed talking about, right? And we could show a lot of grace because I think how many, how, how many times have we talked to somebody whom we really love, but in the moment said things that, you know, weren't said in the nicest way. And we wish we could go back and take that back. I had to just look back there for a second. I heard a little rustling in the branches. And whenever I'm out here at Whiting Ranch, there's always a part of me that's a little bit, you know, a little bit nervous because there are mountain lions, right? So, I mean, always want to be a little careful. All right. And the same goes for a student as well. So if you can imagine that student that you have to talk to, and man, that student just really getting on your nerves for whatever reason. First of all, you know there's a story behind the story, why that might be happening. But also take it another step. Like, how would you want your own child to be talked to by a teacher or administrator? Right, imagine your child made a mistake. And uh, yeah, children make mistakes. Sometimes it's really foolish. Make a bad mistake, you know, in that moment, prefrontal cortex is being developed 
and uh, they're gonna make mistakes. So imagine your child is the one that made the mistake and is being talked to. How would you want them to be talked to by an adult when you're not there, right? And so what a great reminder from this colleague of mine to really, when you talk to someone, consider the other person deeply, like by also empathizing. And one way to empathize is by putting yourself in that shoe. How would I want my spouse to be talked to? How would I want my child to be talked to? And after that, I think you're in a better place to proceed to have that conversation. So I wish you the best in all the courageous conversations that you need to make. And uh, wishing you the best on Ed Family. We're striving to help students find out what they're good at so that they can do good with it. In a moment, I'll be reaching the bottom of Dreaded Hill, where I'll pretty much be mountain hiking it all the way up. And then uh, the rest of the ride will be pretty silent as I ride down and have some fun on single track. Hi, how's it going? Nice job. Thank you. 